when I was five, my mom married a Scientologist and that was the beginning of our family joining that family and joining Scientology. So in her going to the organization, we would go with her, but we were still pretty young. And, mm -hmm. but right about that age where they want you starting your Scientology indoctrination, but we weren't doing that. Instead, my sister and I, we would draw pictures. Mm -hmm. We would uh, color pictures and try to sell them to make money to buy candy. And we got kicked out of the building, the Scientology building for doing that. They said, you can't do that in here. You can't run a business in a Scientology organization. They don't like any type of competition. And apparently our 25 cent photos were sending the wrong message. So we took our business to the streets <laughs> and would we went across the street and we would talk to a security guard named Mark and he would buy the, the, the drawings from us for like 25 cents. So, you know, I'm 10, my sister's seven actually mm -hmm. almost eight and we were we would go out regularly and i had heard my mom spiel about doing a personality test so many times that it was kind of second nature for me and so i would tell mark hey you should come in and do a personality test and you know and buy this picture mm -hmm. and he did end up going in eventually what happened I remember my, my mom came to us and we were in huge trouble. She was telling us that she was being um, told that we couldn't be at the Scientology organization. We were what ended up being temporarily banned because we brought the FBI to Scientology. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? What does this mean? I don't understand any of it. And it was 1980. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that Mark, the security guard, did come into Scientology and tell them that that this is a cult and he went off on them. But Mark was Mark David Chapman, who went on to murder John Lennon in oh. December of 1980. So I inadvertently, <laughs> you know, I guess body routed Mike, Mark David Chapman into Scientology. He thought it was a cult and he didn't stay. There's even a clip on YouTube. It's Scientology staff members talking about Mark David Chapman coming into Scientology and telling them and ranting that it's a cult. But across the street at the Church of Scientology, they knew a different Mark Chapman. All of a sudden, this guy Chapman just jumps in on me and starts screaming at me about this place being a cult and something really peculiar and attacking me and swearing at me. And I couldn't believe it. We both, the guy and I looked at each other and kind of looked over at Chapman. And I thought, well... Let me see if I can, you know, just talk to the guy sanely. What was his I, physical demeanor when, when he started verbally attacking? He was kind of jumping around and I dodging reckon. his head. Oh, yeah. Crazy. I, I, I distinctly recall him even telling us, don't go further down the street because it was Waikiki. But we weren't weren't thinking, you know, anything. Nobody was watching us. We were completely. And this was at nighttime <laughs> in Waikiki. Yeah. I, I remember thinking that he was a bit odd, but I thought mm -hmm. that a lot of people were a bit, you know, adults were kind of odd to me. He yeah. seemed to be kind of over the top. I remember having this feeling of like feeling that he was pointing out, you know, like, go, don't go down the street, like that it was dangerous outside and, you know, not a safe place to be. Don't go, don't go past the block was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I can remember thinking like he's worked up about it. He seemed now I can put words to it. Agitated. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Almost, you know, paranoid looking around. Don't don't go down there. Don't go down there. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing, though, is he was really into the art and mm -hmm. encouraging about the art that stood out to me as well, because not only did he buy some of our drawings that we did, he encouraged it and was like encouraging the arts. That's something that really stuck with me as well. And he seemed to know about Scientology because I do remember, because I said it a few times to, you know, come to do a personality test, to mm. ride across the street. And I don't recall him saying anything specifically to us about it being a cult. I don't, I feel like I would really remember that because mm. I would have gone straight to my mom. Mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't open to it either. But at some point he did go over there and tell them they were a cult. And I always wondered, you know, you're seeing these two young children, girls, outside mm -hmm. on the street in the evening, outside a place like Scientology. You know, do you go over there and give them a piece of your mind? Like, hey. Pretty, pretty strange character. And he 
He spent a lot of time pacing, very nervously. He, he, when he go out in front of the building, he'd be pacing out there. There's this incredible covert hostility about it. I don't, I, I don't know. I saw the video of the staff members in Scientology from back then after he had gone and, and murdered John Lennon. But I definitely would say his behavior was, it just seemed paranoid. Because mm -hmm. I can remember having that feeling of, I knew, I mean, for, for kids, we were pretty street smart because that's how we were raised. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we weren't going to be go running around Waikiki, but it was this added intense intensity about not going beyond a certain point and how dangerous it was. Like mm -hmm. a, you know, looking around kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, I remember that because his reaction and the the energy and how he communicated it scared me more than, you know, just that, yeah, there's stranger danger. But yeah. he was my best customer. So, you know, I had to maintain <laughs> that relationship. <laughs> so as a child, I, I didn't know that that had happened. I didn't know that he went in there. I didn't find out about this till I was an adult. Or Well, I mean, let me take that back. I knew that he went in. I didn't know the timing. So right. I knew he went in there because that was part of why I thought we got in so much trouble because mm -hmm. part of it was you brought the attention of the FBI to Scientology and then it was that he went into the org. Org in Scientology, they call it the org or org short for organization. Um, But I remember thinking that like, I so I, I can't tell you the timing of, oh, one day I sold him a picture, the next day he went in, the next day I went back. Mm -hmm. I just know that we were in trouble for communicating with him that he went into the organization it was being insinuated that that was somehow my fault and it probably was to a degree mm -hmm. and the other thing that it was um the thing about the FBI yeah. talking to Tom and when and and at the time I didn't know about what had happened in Scientology in the 70s I didn't learn that till I left Scientology mm -hmm. so then it all made sense with my you know, with, with the eyes of an adult, when I was able to look back and go, okay, what happened? And then when I learned about the Scientology infiltrating 136 government agencies, the FBI raid, everything that the FBI raid turned up, no wonder Scientology was so paranoid about the FBI. So fast forward a couple of years to 1980, and here are these kids, and this guy comes in and turns out he's being investigated by the FBI because he just murdered somebody and not just anybody he murdered john lennon so my mom had said that the fbi had questions about his relationship or it seemed like they were trying to determine did he have ties to scientology because scientology was already on the keep an eye on mm -hmm. list from the fbi and that's why my family got in so much trouble for that because you don't, Scientology doesn't want that attention. Law enforcement, definitely not the FBI. If you have a family member who works for the FBI, you cannot do Scientology. So right. they are the next level about it. It was after the FBI. We didn't get in trouble, you know, like went right when he went in there because he went in there before he killed John Lennon, but it was really close to it. It was, that was yeah. the year. It was 1980. I knew, I mean, I had heard of John Lennon because I had heard of the Beatles, but it wasn't something I think I didn't really process till I was older. And I would, I always felt a little like this sense of guilt when I would hear the music and, but I didn't do anything wrong. We had nothing to do with it, but we were made to feel like we did something so wrong by Scientology. They did. It, it was not about John Lennon being murdered and dying. That was mm -hmm. not Scientology's upset. They were upset that the FBI came to the door. We were led to believe that we had done something so horrible that mm -hmm. it resulted in our family being temporary banned from showing up at the at the Scientology organization, which, to be honest, was kind of nice for a little while. <laughs> oh, gosh, it didn't last long because they're they're always so desperate for people. I want to say it didn't last more than a couple of months. And then it was, well, you can come back, but the girls have to start their Scientology training.